Thank you for listening to my daddy's podcast. going on sports fans my name is timothy j jones and welcome to another edition of the gumbo pie sports podcast It's where we talk about some of the hottest topics in all of sports before we get started i ask that you hit the like and subscribe button help us to grow this channel and if you're new to the channel hopefully by the end you will have hit that subscribe button let's go ahead and get into it we're continuing our talk 32 teams in 32 days breaking down all 32 nfl teams So far, we've done quite a few episodes. Right now, we're focusing on the AFC North. We already got two teams out of the way. And now we're going to switch gears to a team that really uh, overachieved and really lived up to the hype. Uh, I'm talking about the Cleveland Browns. Now, the Cleveland Browns are a well-kept secret in the NFL, in my opinion, right? But I mean, but at the same time, you know, there were some expectations. But I don't think people really fully understand how talented this team is. Uh, They won 11 games last season in any other division. They would have won the division. But when you play in the AFC North, it is one of those divisions where you have to scratch and bite and claw your way to every single victory because all the teams are good. I mean, even Cincinnati, they, they finished nine and eight, right? And that was because Joe Burrow wasn't there. But when you look at the Cleveland Browns, it's kind of similar to what, the Cincinnati Bengals are going through. Uh, A lot of the issues that they have is because of the inconsistency at the quarterback position. Now, we know what they did a few years ago, bringing in Deshaun Watson to be able to kind of, you know, shore up that quarterback position. But of course, over the last few years, uh, it hasn't really looked good uh, for Deshaun Watson. Uh, He cannot stay healthy. And that has been the Achilles heel of this team. But they have improved in some areas and they are they are ready they're ready to go out there and show what they can do and put their best foot forward but let's go ahead and get into it Uh, we're going to take a look at the depth chart right now um we're going to start with quarterback Deshaun Watson uh I mentioned Deshaun Watson uh he has all the tools uh to be everything that the Cleveland Browns fans and the organization wants him to be you know a few years ago we all know about the the whole you know, controversy surrounded Deshaun Watson. I don't need to get into that. But we know what he is as a quarterback. The only issue is he has not been able to stay healthy. I mean, he only played in six games last season, but he showed flashes, right? It just seems like he was getting back into football shape. It seemed like he was trying to put all of the stuff behind him and trying to move forward. And, you know, he was making some plays. But, of course, he ends up getting injured. And you, then you had to kind of, you know, rotate quarterbacks. Uh, you know, you got uh, Joe Flacco out there. He provided a little bit of a spark. And, you know, you had some other quarterbacks, Dorian Thompson, Robinson. Uh, he was out there. So it was just a, a complete mixed bag there. And there was no consistency. But if Deshaun Watson can stay healthy, if he can stay upright, this offense can thrive. Uh, his ability to be able to scramble outside of the pocket get the ball down the field to his playmakers. That is the key. I think that you're going to continue to have these issues if Deshaun Watson doesn't stay healthy. But you do have a solid backup in Jameis Winston. Uh, Jameis Winston coming over from the New Orleans Saints. Uh, It's time for him to kind of turn the page a little bit. A lot of people thought that he would have been the starting quarterback of the Saints, but the Saints decided to go with Derek Carr. So now this is an opportunity for Jameis Winston. Um, Jameis Winston has been waiting for his opportunity, and this could be it. I mentioned the the issues with Deshaun Watson being injured. You know, Jameis Winston could be that guy to step in, and if he does a good job, who knows? I mean, then you find yourself in a little bit of a controversy, or Jameis Winston can find himself maybe going to another team, getting another shot to be a sole starter. So a really good uh, compliment to Deshaun Watson. Uh, We know what Jameis Winston can do. He can throw the ball down the field. Uh, but we also know he can uh, turn the ball over a little bit, unfortunately. So uh, right now, you, you have some stability at the quarterback position with Deshaun Watson. You got some guys with talent. I mentioned Dorian thompson Robinson, Tyler Huntley, and Jameis Winston. I mean, they all provide uh, a certain skill set that is needed and 
you can win with. But Deshaun Washington is going to be the straw that stirs the drink. That's the consistent guy out of the group. Then you move on. Uh, you have Nick Chubb, Jerome Ford, uh, Deontay Foreman, and you also brought in Nikam Hines. So when you look at this team, it starts with Nick Chubb. But we know about Nick Chubb uh, dealing with that injury. Don't know if he's going to be available. Probably not. It's probably going to take some time. But we know what Nick Chubb was before this injury. The question is, can he be that same guy he was uh, before the injury took place? Uh, but Jerome Ford, he came in. He did a formidable job. Uh, you know, you got Deontay Foreman. He's more of a, a smash mouth type running back, a guy that's going to, you know, give you that one cut. But he's going to give you a lot. I mean, Deontay Foreman is very underrated. He kind of reminds me of like DeMarco Murray. You know, everywhere he goes, he always seems to leave his mark. It just seems like teams just don't want to commit to him for reasons beyond me. Uh, he was in Carolina. I thought he did a formidable job. He was in Chicago, did a formidable job. Now he comes to Cleveland, and hopefully they'll give him an opportunity. And this is his chance. You know, it, it may take some time for Nick Chubb in order for him to get healthy or get to a point where they feel like he's back to his old form. You know, and this is an opportunity for some of these other guys to step up. Uh, we know what Hines can do, you know, in a passing game. So it, it's good that they actually found some guys that can actually fill in until Nick Chubb is back up and running. Then you look at the wide receiver room. You got Amari Cooper. You just brought in Jerry Judy over from the Denver Broncos. Uh, you had Elijah Moore who came over from the Jets. Uh, you know, you, you got some talent there. I mean, Amari Cooper had 1,200 receiving yards last season i mean just monster play after monster play big play after big play you know i think that this is the type of environment that amari cooper can thrive in I, I think that you know playing for the raiders he put up big numbers then he goes to dallas and he had that spotlight on him and everybody was critiquing him every single game oh he doesn't show up in road games and all that kind of stuff for people's entertainment but he just not that type of guy like i don't feel like he's that rah-rah guy yeah, he'll talk, and yeah, he's confident in himself, but I don't think he he wants to be that guy that's all on the TV being talked about all the time. I feel like he feels comfortable in this environment. He just wants to do his job, and he does it effectively. And uh, he still has it. He's a really good route runner. He still has that, that speed to get down the field, and that's why I say all those explosive plays that he has. So if Deshaun Watson can stay healthy, I mean, you got your – you know, you one two punch right there. We know what Deshaun Watson can be as long as he's healthy. But if he's not, then you're going to find yourself trying to figure it out. I also feel like it's a testament to Amari Cooper as a player. The fact that he will go out there and he perform no matter who the quarterback is. Because there were quite a few quarterback changes in Cleveland last season. So, shouts out to Amari Cooper. You definitely still got a number one right there. Then you bring over Jerry Judy, who can be a really solid number two you know, Jerry Judy, to me, coming out of Alabama, another Alabama guy here, Mari is as well. But it just seems to me like I thought he would have been much better than he has been. You know, he's been kind of middle of the pack. Not to say that he's terrible. He's not. But you expected more out of a guy. I, I think Denver expected more. I don't know exactly what it is, but maybe a change of scenery, being alongside a guy like Cooper, you know, somebody that, that been a mentor to him, uh, throughout his time at Alabama, maybe that will be able to help him. Maybe that Alabama connection could be exactly what he needs. And then you have Elijah Moore, a guy more of a slot guy. Um, I also feel like he is doing a little bit better that he left the Jets. I just feel like in big markets, sometimes there is such a high expectation and guys just expect you or fans expect you. There we go. Fans expect you to just to be great right away. And if you're not that, then all of a sudden, you know, here come the hit pieces. Here come the, the distraction pages of, of stuff about you're not being everything that the team wants you to be. But I, I like the role that he's in right now, and he's thriving there. So you got two guys that can get it on the outside in Judy and Cooper. And then you have a guy that gives you a little bit of a wiggle uh, in, in the slot with Elijah Moore. So good combination there. And then you look at the tight end room. Uh, I'll just talk about David Njoku here. Uh, David Njoku is is very, very talented. He made the Pro Bowl last season. And he he's a guy that is a utility blanket for a quarterback. You know, he he's a big physical guy. You know, he'll get down the field. 
He uses his body real well in the red zone. And uh, he can be that that leading receiver on your team. You know, especially if Amari Cooper uh, was getting double teamed, he can be a guy that can win his one-on-one -on -one matchups. I expect for him to be able to build on the momentum he's had over the last couple of years. Had a few issues when it came, come to putting a ball on the ground, but it just seems like things are starting to work out for him. I, I, I like the offense of the Cleveland Browns. I think that it is one of those offenses that has the, the possibility of being uh, a really good one. Then you look at the offensive line, and I, I feel like this has been the issue. Uh, and it's not because this offensive line is bad. I mean, when you have somebody like Nick Chubb and he's running wild, and we also know about, you know, year after year, the offensive line always comes through for the Cleveland Browns. It's just the fact that you have guys that have been hurt uh, all season. I mean, it's just been a rotation of the lineup. And then you have to get together and, and form that camaraderie. And, it, and it, it can be hard, you know, especially like if a guy is focused on his job, but he got to talk to this other guy because he's not sure about what he's doing. You're not a cohesive unit. So I feel like that was one of the issues as to why they, they've had so many problems. I mean, you, you look at this, this offensive line that they have, I mean, I, I like DeWan Jones, what he did last season, you know, stepping in. But, I mean, you also have some guys that have been injured. So if they can stay healthy and be able to hit the ground running, I feel like this can be an effective offense. I feel like that was the reason why the offense wasn't everything that it needed to be. I mean, the fact that you didn't have stability at the quarterback position and you didn't have stability on the offensive line. Then we move on to the defense, the defensive side of football. Uh, the Cleveland Browns have the number one ranked defense in the entire NFL. I mean, they are a stingy defense. I mean, they can stop the run, even though, you know, the numbers are kind of skewed a little bit, in my opinion. I mean, they can stop the run. They can rush the passer. And Lord knows they can defend the pass. I mean, they're one of the best teams in the league when it comes to that. I mean, they're led by Miles Garrett, who was the defensive player of the year. Uh, you got uh, Zadarius Smith, who came in um, from Minnesota, had five and a half sacks. I mean, you got some talented guys, man, and they, they can get after it. And, uh, you know, they take a lot of pride in that unit. And if you can complement that defense with a steady, I, I'm not saying top 10 offense, but middle of the pack. The fact that they won 11 games, switching out quarterbacks, not really getting consistency when at the quarterback position. Guys turning the ball over, and they still manage to win 11 games. Imagine what your team can be if they get this offense on track. Your defense is where, where it needs to be. I mean, you got Denzel Ward. Uh, you know, he made the Pro Bowl. Uh, you got uh, Martin Emerson, you know, was one of the best cornerbacks in the league. Very underrated. You got Greg Newsom out there. You know, he is very underrated. You know, these are well-kept secrets. Like, people know about Denzel Ward, and they know about Grand Delpit. They know about those type of guys because of where they came from. But guys like Martin Emerson, people aren't really talking about him. You know, Greg Newsom, I want to say he went to Northwestern. Nobody was really talking about him. So these are the type of guys that are well-kept secrets. But I guarantee you, the NFL world knows who these guys are. And I guarantee you, if they were for a contract, they'll get paid a, a, a lot of money. I mean, this is a talented group. You got to get credit to the Cleveland Browns organization for finding this nucleus of players to, to collectively be in their secondary and provide a no-fly zone. So, in 2024, what do I expect for the Cleveland Browns? I expect for the Cleveland Browns to kind of be in that 10-11 win uh, realm right there. You know, I feel like they have the pieces they just need that offensive line to stay together. They need Deshaun Watson uh, to stay healthy. Uh, I, I do feel like, you know, you can win some games with Jameis Winston if Deshaun Watson isn't available. Uh, but I, I do feel like the straw, the straw that stirs the drink is Deshaun Watson. And if Deshaun Watson plays and he plays consistent, this can be a very dangerous team. Uh, we know a few years ago, this team was a Chad Henning 13-yard scramble away from making the AFC Championship game. So imagine what they can be if they keep this number one rated defense and you, you fix the, the problems that plagued your offense. This can be a magical year for Cleveland Browns fans and the Browns organization. But I would love to hear from you. What do you think about the 2024 Cleveland Browns? Are they a playoff team? 
Will they double down on a success that they had last season? Will Deshaun Washington stay healthy enough in order for them to be able to get over the hump, maybe win a playoff game? Comment down below, like, and share this video. Thank you so much for checking out the Gumbo Pie Sports Podcast. Once again, my name is Timothy J. Jones. You can follow me on X at TJAY Jones 8. You can check out previous episodes that are available by clicking on one of these videos right in front of me.